He will be with me and his soldiers and his wife and his wife. There's a nice fellow to tell you who my guests are tonight. He's Eastwood. He's Wayne. He's a dwarf. A world premiere movie. He's a short private eye with some very big credentials and bigger friends. <laughs> but who's going to cover me from the waist up? A pint-sized New York cop who takes a shortcut through Hollywood. That's what I'm afraid of. Dean Martin, Tony Curtis, Morgan Brittany, Fred Williamson, and George Kennedy join Joe Pesci when he cuts the crooks in... Come on, Green Star. Half Nelson, tonight. I like that. you later, okay? Stop trying to be a man. You're only wasting your time, Herbie. Could you excuse us a minute, please, miss? Why should I? So I don't run you in for hooking without a golf club. Well, I know he looks small, honey, but he carries a big badge. Hey, Herbie, how are you, pal? I didn't hear about a thing. I heard there's enough snow coming down here sometime tonight to hold the Winter Olympics. And when's it going down? Now. Now? I mean, now, now? Uh-huh. Two guys by the door, soldiers. Mm -hmm. Three ponchos and a boot up front? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, are you depressing. What are you gonna do without a backup, little man? None of your business. Don't move. Stay here. Hey, Woody, how you doing? Let go right now. There's gonna be a slight disturbance in here in a little while, and you're gonna have to make a decision where to point that shotgun you got under the counter. If you point it at me, I'm gonna shoot you right in the face, Butch. How you like that? On the other hand, if you point it at these three guys in the booth behind me, I promise you there won't be a bust in this joint for two years. See you later, Butch. Uh, two beers for the back room. Nobody back their order drinks. Are you sure? Because the bartender... I said nobody. Okay, my friend. Don't be upset. No problem. I take them back, you know? Oh. Sam. Sam, I've been looking all over for you, Sam. How could you have this party without me? This must be the biggest bust in New York history. There's no middle ground for an undercover cop. You're either a bum or a hero. This time I was a hero all the way. And the mayor decided to give me a medal. Besides that, Hollywood wanted to buy my story. But I wouldn't let them unless I could play the lead. I mean, that's what 
made me a good cop. So they set it up. I get to come out for a screen test. I'm on my way to Hollywood. Screen test, roll, uh, Rocky Nelson, please. The bar didn't look like the one I did all the action in. Yeah. Plus, Hollywood does things a little different than we did on the real police force. The people were blonder, and the girls were a little cuter. You gotta like this guy. Would you excuse us, please, miss? Why should I? So I don't run you in for hooking without a golf club. My God, that voice. He's, he's, he's another De Niro. He's been working with me on larynx exercises. I heard that there's enough snow coming down here sometime tonight to hold the Winter Olympics. Now, when's it going down? That presence. He's Pacino. That walk. He's Eastwood. If it points my way, I'm gonna shoot you right in the face, Butchie. He's Hoffman. He's Wayne. He's a dwarf. Cut! Where did you find this guy? He looks like he's standing in a hole. Uh, actually, I, he's Rocky Nelson. He's the real guy, the one the story's all about. I just thought in the interest of reality, I'll get rid of him, Raphael. Uh, next screen test for the part of Rocky Nelson, please. Yes, Drew Stolf, right here. What does this mean? I mean, what is this? Don't get irksome. Just leave. Leave? I gave up being a cop to come out here to play this part. I am Rocky Nelson. It's me. Let me go, or you'll never work again in this industry. I'm gonna play if I can't play me anyway. Okay, over here. How could I be too short to play myself? Can you explain that? You just don't understand Hollywood. Taking drugs is something. I don't understand it. Stupid. Let's clear the set, please. All right, everybody ready? Hey, uh, Mr. Nelson. What now? What are they gonna do? Throw me out, too? No, nothing like that. I'm on your side. You mean you're broke, unemployed, depressed, stranded, suicidal? Let's just say I've been there. You see, I once wanted to be an actor myself. Yeah? What happened? They tell you you were too short to play yourself? Worse, they told me I was too untalented to play anyone. And they were right. But not about you. I saw your test. You were good. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a chance. That's why I'm thinking maybe I got something for you to help you until you get your big break. What's that, a job as a security guard? I don't think it's quite the image I want to run around a studio with. No, no, no. I wouldn't expect one of the best cops in the country to put on one of these monkey suits. But you don't think this is my main gig, do you? See, I'm part owner of Beverly Hills Patrol. Beverly Hills Patrol. Yeah, I thought that'd get you. It's only the most prestigious security organization in the city, and I can get you in. Why do I get the idea that you're about to sell me a site of encyclopedias? Yeah, that natural police cynicism. I love it. It's just what we need to help us train our new recruits. The big athletic types, you know, long on muscles, short on brains. We do a lot of bodyguard work. So, where do I come in? I see. Beverly Hills Patrol was formed by these famous people who regularly need private police work. Man, with your background, could be a lot of good to them. What's the matter with the Beverly Hills Police or the LAPD? Ah, uh, well, see, police officers, assistant DAs, they've all got careers to build. They like publicity. People we work for don't. It sounds tempting, but uh, I came out here to act, not to do police work. Well, one of our owners is Dean Martin. He needs a live-in security man right now to Keep an eye on his estate. That gives you a free place to hang your hat and uh, all the fringe benefits. What fringe benefits? Well, think of the people you're going to meet. You're going to meet producers and directors and big stars. You got access to the studio, eh? And I might be able to loan you a fancy uh, set of threads or wheels, you know, for the big job interview. Nice clothes and better cars, huh? Yeah, they got everything here. Of course, I'm talking about a special occasion here. You know, I gotta be very careful about what goes off this lot without an authorization. I can see where this might work, Stan. Maybe we have a deal. But you understand, it's just temporary. Sure, give it six months. How about weeks? Six weeks, however long it takes you to become a star. <laughs> I like that. I'll take it. Great. 
about the clothes and the cars, though, you, you do understand. I gotta be careful. Come on, don't worry about it. We'll work it out, huh? From now on, I'm part of all this. Beverly Hills Patrol, here I come. Rolling down Imperial Highway. The big nasty bed out of my side. Santa and the wind's blowing hot from the north. We were born to ride. Put down the top, crank up the beach for us, baby. Don't let the music stop. We go ride it till we just can't ride it no more. From the side thing to the valley, from the west side to the east side, everybody very happy. Cause the sun is shining all the time. It's like another perfect day. for its big party. As it turned out, I was at the wrong one. I should have been at one where I was needed to help two friends of mine. Uh, it's fine, sir. You're on the list. You can go on in. Party, you always have a good time. Not anymore. I'm through. I will decide when you're through. Not anymore. Darling, did I force you into being wined and dined by some of the most important people in the world? Look, I found somebody. He's a really nice man from a very good family. Congratulations. If his family knew I went to parties like this. Darling, these people want their personal lives kept private even more than you do. Do these people know about the tapes? How do you know about the tapes? Why are you showing me this? Well, because you obviously already know about it. What I want to know is how. This is my little secret, Monica. It's sick. Those people don't even know they're being taped. A week ago, I found two of my tapes missing. Oddly, you were on both of them. Now, isn't that a coincidence? I want to leave. I want my tapes back. I don't have them. You're a liar. What I want to know is, what do you intend to do with them? Protect myself from you. Look, I know how powerful you are. Now, just leave me alone, and I swear to you, I'll never show those tapes to anyone. You swear, but what about your boyfriend? I can handle him. Oh, you handle people very well. You've learned a lot since you met me. But you still haven't grasped the primary. Stay in your own league. You're in way over your head. Do you really believe that I'd let you get away with this? You have no choice. I have options you could never dream of. I have solved the security leak. And now we have another problem. Ask the gentleman on the select party list to meet in my upstairs office now. Yes, sir. What's up, Arthur? By the way, your timing's lousy. My bird was just homing into the target. No chance for a recall. <laughs> Arthur, this is no time for boys' night out. There are dozens of the most beautiful peacocks in the world downstairs just asking to be plucked. <laughs> Mr. 
Well, <clears throat> I'm afraid you gentlemen have a much more urgent problem. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but a young lady whom you all know very well has had the poor judgment to attempt to ruin your lives. <laughs> she moved to Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, Arthur? We've been taped. Taped? You mean somebody's been listening into Not listening. Watching. With a video camera. <laughs> You've got to be kidding I mean, how could anybody come into your home with this security system that you have? And... It was my security that did it. I think that Monica Kern and her boyfriend did this on their own. What exactly did they do? And who did they do it to? All of us, explicitly and collectively. So you are your mind. This could hit us all like a bombshell. Your parties were supposed to be private. Private, tasteful, nice affairs. Will you tell that to the Pentagon? And NASA? And the network? And if the public goes along, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, then I take it we're all agreed to act as one, regardless of what might have to happen? Uh, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. That's up to you, isn't it? How you want Monica Kern and her young lover handled? Okay, okay, hold it down, everybody, please. I've got a little speech here. As Chief Operating Officer of Beverly Hills Patrol, I wish to propose a toast to Rocky Nelson. The anniversary of his first six months with us. To Rocky! Yay! Hey, could you put Channel 4 on? I think I'm on the end of the program. I can't turn off the basketball game in the middle. I'll change hey, the hey, channel. Hey, come, come on, on, come on. Come on, you gotta do it. It's my first big role. There won't be a dry eye in the house. Everybody will be drinking and kill their pain. Wait till you see him. I bet he'll be wonderful. Change the channel. Come on. Hey, hey, come on. Come on. Yeah, sounds like a real treat. Don't do anything crazy. Come on, easy now. Drop dead already. I want to watch the game. Let's make a deal. Hallelujah. Hold it, hold it. I ain't dead yet. I don't die that easy. Watch. Rocky, come on, get up. Grab the poker. Nah, forget it. Hit him with a base. Hey, all right. I was the first bullet would have killed you. Hey, hey, for me, Rocky, I thought you were great. Yeah, you're just saying that because the part was small. Probably worked for you the rest of my life. Not when you're a star, Rocky. What about you? Me? My best friend. What did you think? I think, uh... I gotta go. Oh, well, I asked him to be honest, but he could have lied a little bit, huh? Hey, hey, don't take it personal, Rocky. Uh, he hasn't been himself lately. As a matter of fact, I think he has a few personal problems of his own. Yeah, but that ain't like him. You better go see what's wrong. Hey, come on, come on. Jerry's a big boy. If he needed your help, he'd ask for it. Come on, have a drink. There's no telling what he might do to me. He can't do anything. No, oh, no. He can just tell your family and friends what a nice girl you've chosen to marry. He can't say anything as long as we have those tapes showing him and his friends for what they are. No, Jerry. We've got to give them back to him. Give them back? They're only protection. Protection? You didn't see his face when I told him that I had him. He looked like he could kill me on the spot. Jerry, I'm really frightened. Don't be. Those tapes are going to be in good hands. You'll see. We can't trust anybody with those tapes. In the wrong hands, they'd be worth a fortune. Monica, I trust Rocky Nelson with my life. I think you would, too. Yes, of course. It's just... You don't know those men like I do. You're putting Rocky in a very dangerous position. That's why I'm dividing the tapes up. 
The other one will be in the hands of someone they'll never think of. Who? I'm not gonna tell you. That way I know you'll be safe from them. No matter how powerful and above the law they may think they are. my shift tonight. Get Rocky to do it. I'll meet him at Fantasia to fill him in. Jerry? You know, I'm making a habit of this. What is it this time? Uh, it's some very personal business I gotta take care of. Now, this will not happen again, right? right. Hey, last time. I promise. The deal with Dean Martin worked out pretty good for me. He let me live in his guest house. And all I had to do was keep an eye on security around his estate. And once in a while, fix a thing or two. Mr. Martin liked gadgets, and fixing things was sort of a hobby of mine. All in all, I had a nice little home. And it was just a matter of time until I hit it big and had a place like this myself. Hey, Rockies, can I see you a minute? Sure. Unfortunately, my time is my own. The reading didn't go too well. It's the third time this week. This producer said the same thing. I'm too young, I'm too short, I'm too ethnic, I'm too old. I don't think he quite saw me in the part. Hey, if there's anything I can do... No, 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 Mr. Martin, really, I mean, you, you've done enough just getting me the part-time job. I mean, that's... It really helps me out, you know, being able to get away when I have to. That's great, really. All right, by the way, if you have a chance, would you take a look at the automatic pin setter down there? Because... We're going to have a little tricathlon here Sunday, and the one on the right keeps getting stuck. Your company calls. Beverly Hills Patrol. Did you beep or what? Oh, yeah. Your pal Jerry's done it to us again. You're going to have to pull a shift for him tonight. Uh, what's the job? Jerry will meet you at RJ's and explain. Eight o'clock, wear a tux. Since when do I have time to rent a tux? Since when did you start renting anything? You. Mr. Collins, you better get over here right away. Rocky just drove through with that look in his eye. He's here now? Just drove in. All right, don't let him leave the lot until you talk to me, you understand? You said it was all right to let him in any time. Coming in, I got no problem with. It's what he's going out with that's getting out of hand. Now, find out where he is. Part of the job is looking good when you're out with big celebrities. So if it's no big deal to anybody, why don't I use a Ferrari if he's just sitting around doing nothing? Hey! It's a nice car. Where'd you get it? In the lot, where I get all of it. Uh, I really appreciate this, Rocky. You saved my neck. You got me again, huh? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I could use the money. What's the job? Well, we got a group of sports stars in there, and a few fans who maybe want to try proving they're tougher than Larry Holmes, so... The champ? Yeah, he's yours. Mine? Yeah, you'll like him. You'll see eye to eye. <laughs> Not without a ladder, I won't. What's the matter? You got a problem? A problem? Why? You need money as bad as I do. And this is the third time this week you gave me a job, you know. Oh, you got a little problem. Monica and I are going to handle it tonight. Are you know how to beef? Oh, no, come on. No, 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 it's nothing like that. There's something you can do for us, though. Uh, this is a tape. Now, there's a chance that somebody could come looking for it, but you can't give it up, no matter who they are, right? You're talking to me. You don't want anybody to get it, nobody gets it. Thanks. But you sure you don't have a problem? No, I don't have a problem. If you got a problem, you there's better tell me. Problem. Just how do I get out of here? 
I'll tell you about it when I can. All right? All right. You have a good night. All right. Excuse me, Chan. My name is Rocky Nelson. I'm with Beverly Hills Patrol. I'm your cover for tonight. You're my cover tonight? That's it. Well, who's gonna cover me from the waist up? <laughs> hey, fellas. This is my man. I want you to say hi to Jerry Royce. Hi, Jerry. Nice to meet you. Rocky, pleasure. Ben Latouz. Hey, John Latouz. Hey. He's your security. You know what they say in sports? Heart is 90%. Yeah? Still, it doesn't hurt to be able to hit like a truck, huh, Rock? How about a little Jeep, John? <laughs> I'll buy that. Okay. So you gentlemen sit down, relax, enjoy yourselves. I'm just gonna nosy around and make sure no people bother you or anything like that, okay? I feel a lot better now. Thanks. <laughs> to leave those tapes lying around here. They're in a safe place where you'll never find them. You people think you can get away with anything just because you're big shots. Get out. Get out of here or I'll scream! Right. There's always somebody who thinks he's tougher than a champ. Hey, chump. I mean, uh, champ. Champ. <laughs> How about we go around? See who buys the next round of drinks, huh? Well, thanks, fellas. The champ is just here for a good time. Hey, fellas. The champ is as dumb as he looks. He can't even talk for himself. Come on, I'll take care. Listen, uh, you're not gonna let me talk you out of this, but... We all got tuxedos on and nice suits. Nobody wants to get all messed up. So, uh, I'll tell you what, you pick your toughest guy. We'll do the same. One on one, we'll settle it that way, okay? All right, you got it. Me. Who's yours? You got it. Me. <laughs> you? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Use a ladder? <laughs> no, I'll start from down here. Uh, oh, look who's here. Oh, yeah. Cocktail, sir. Beverly Hills Patrol. Yes, Lieutenant. How are you tonight? Jerry? Jerry? No, he he's not on assignment. He um took the night off tonight. Why? Each other. We'll get in the circle. Oh, Rocky. Oh, thank God you called right in. What's the matter? It's Jerry and Monica. I just got a call. From who? From homicide. Make it. Not if he's 
lucky, most of his brain is blown away. Uh, what happened? Open and shut. He killed her, then he tried to kill himself. How do you know that? Did you find a note or something? She was shot at close range. He was shot even closer. The gun was in his hand. The positions were all textbook. Did you find an envelope or something? No, more. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Rocky, if, if you know something that you're not telling me... What's the difference? You said open and shut. You don't believe that? I know Jerry. That, he didn't do that. Nobody knows anybody when it comes to a thing like that. I know Jerry. I know how he thought. The guy they took out, he didn't think like him. That wasn't him. Open and shut, Rocky. Don't screw at this one. I'm gonna nail whoever did this, Claude. I swear I'm gonna nail whoever did this. I'm warning you. You're not a New York, you're not a cop, and you better not be a vigilante. I don't want you running around half-cocked trying to avenge your friend. What we need here is solid police work. The police are all through. Remember? Open and shut. You said so yourself. Good night, Captain. <laughs> That's the one he gave the tape to. human beings like this. <sighs> nurse. Nurse, about my, my friend here, uh, uh, Mr. Nelson. I mean, somebody's got to do something about him. Check the guy in blue. He's wearing a Ferraro Mondale button. Hey, Rocky, this ain't no laughing matter, man. Somebody could be dying in here. I don't know what I'm complaining about. I made out better than Jerry and Monica anyway. Yeah, I heard. Look, I know none of us were as close to Jerry as you were, but uh, we all feel pretty bad. Thanks. Not as bad as whoever did it's gonna feel, Chester, I'll tell you that. Rocky, the police say they got this thing under... Let's start with the police. They're taking the easy way out on this, and I'm gonna find out why, too. Rocky, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Now, look, you know our firm is owned by a lot of prominent people who like things done low profile. I mean, that's the whole reason we're in business. We can't go around stirring things up. Who's stirring anything up? Somebody cracked me in the head and took a tape Jerry gave me. What tape? Tape he gave me to hold for him. It's probably why him and Monica were killed. I'm Howard Macon. I understand my son Jerry is here in this hospital. Howard, just a minute, sir. What are you doing here? My name is Rocky Nelson. We used to work together. He was my best friend. Well, you can get your tail out of here. We'll take care of him from now on. You don't want him back like this. I saw what that bullet did to him. Goodbye, Jerry. Mr. Nelson. You believe it. My boy shot that girl and then himself. No. Not even a little bit. I got a phone call from a lawyer fella here. Uh, 
Leo uh, Holcomb, you know him? No. What's it about? Says it's in regards to my son. And I was just wondering, maybe, maybe you could take care of that for me. I'm just not up to all that right now. Sure, I'd be glad to. Somebody's been following me since I left the hospital. He's speeding up, and they have spotted me. I'm losing. I hope it's the two guys I owe six stitches to. I think I'll repay them. Three each. <laughs> I don't know. Step on it. Oh. Hey, I thought you wanted to talk. How's that? Get out of here. We can't let you put a make on it. All right, all right. My car, Randy, I would have had him. Find out how much a bumper costs on a Ferrari. Are you crazy? This car's due on the set. Get it over to the process stage. They're screaming for it. What are you doing? I'm letting you be the hero. What are you talking about? Well, it seems to me if the whole picture depends on one missing car and the head of security brings it back in the nick of time, he ought to be a pretty big hero. Go ahead. You got the mind of a criminal, you know that? What are you yelling about? I got it back, didn't I? It's as good as new. We got to have a talk, Nelson. A very serious talk. You found it, Stan. Thank God. Somebody find Sully. We're finally ready for it. You know something, Stan? In a business where a lot of people seem to have lost pride in their work, you are a breath of fresh air. I figured the odds of getting this thing back in, in this kind of condition were, oh, one in a million. <laughs> well, I guess you could say that I just know how to run a really tight ship. What are you crying for? I'm okay. Just a few stitches, see? Hard as a rock. I can hardly get the needle in. Is Chester in? Um, no, Chester's out. Well, I got this video I want to play. I want to use his machine. Well, what kind of tape you got? You, you, it won't work. You have beta. The boss has VHS, and that only plays on a beta machine. Figures. I got two guys trying to kill me for this thing, and I can't even play it. I'm going to run home and check it. I thought I told you to turn it off. I'm okay. What's the matter? Oh, well, it's not you. It's my little hunk. Your what? Well, it was going to be a surprise. I named him after you. What kind of surprise are we talking about that you named after me? <coughs> what the hell is that? It's a pedigreed pit bull. Pedigree? You mean walking symbol for mongolization, don't you? <coughs> You'll be great together. What do you mean, great together? I have to get rid of them. They've outlawed pit bulls in Orange County. Well, I got an idea. You'll take them? No, move. Hello. Wow. It's like making out with Darth Vader. You learn to love you. That's very comforting. All right, I'll take them. Oh, Just for a while until you find a suitable zoo. around the corner, Annie. Mr. Martin's neighbors asked if I'd keep it out of sight. Hold it right here. Okay, 
Oh, let's go. Let's go. Come on. I think Orange County knew what they were doing. Yeah, you take him. He'll love you once he accepts you. Yeah, if he lets me live that long. <laughs> Come on, Hung. Come on. You knew that just from the barks? Oh, yes, I mean all kinds of dogs. I just hope Punk doesn't attack them. He's gonna attack a German Shepherd? Pitbulls make wonderful watchdogs. They've got 1,700 pounds of pressure on their jaws when they bite into something. And they simply never turn loose. They're now illegal in seven states. Mm, no kidding. Hmm? You know, since I'm not gonna be here a lot, maybe we should get him a nice companion, something like a crocodile. Mm. What'd you do? Huh? What happened? I turned off the dogs. You turned them off? Yeah, they're on tape. Mr. Martin likes all kinds of gadgets like that. That's another reason he lets me live here for nothing. I'm good at fixing things. Come on. Oh, me. Oh, this is darling. <laughs> Even Hunk likes it. Listen, just so he doesn't kill Mr. Martin, why don't you take Hunk into the bathroom for now, huh? Will we make you give him up? No, not until we get a good recording of the park. Annie, I got something I gotta do alone. Why don't you take my car and I'll call you later, okay? Okay. Thanks. Good night, Rocky. I'll be waiting. Thanks again for taking Hunk. Hunk, mind the store. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, bye, Rocky. Okay. Now be careful with my car. Did you recognize him? Hey, Rocky, where'd you get that video? Hey, he's a real big shot. I don't think you could afford his hospitality. That man's name is Antonio Marco. You know, the Marco Lounge. Now you're talking. That's the kind of guy that could stir up the heat that's coming down in this case. Thanks a lot, Mr. Martin. Hey, Rocky. Yeah. What's this all about? It's a homicide investigation. Homicide? I didn't know our company was into homicide investigations. Yeah, well, we had no choice. They killed one of our employees. And you're right in the middle of all this, huh? I can move out for a while if it's gonna make you nervous or anything. No, it's not gonna make me nervous. Just do me a favor. On your way out, would you turn up the volume on the dogs? <laughs> okay. You fix that quick. <laughs> Monica. Rocky, the case is closed. Why did somebody crack me in the head for the tape Jerry gave me? Is that the package you were looking for at Monica's? No, another one. There were two tapes? Uh-huh. Who's got the other one? I don't know. That's what I want to find out. Rocky, you start running a homicide investigation outside of this department, and I'll pull your company's ticket. Just let me see the coroner's report. I think I can prove that Jerry didn't beat her up at least. How? Jerry's left-handed. His right hand didn't have a mark on it. I think Monica was hit on the left side of her face before she was killed. Now, if that's true, then we know whoever it was was looking for something before they killed her. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
You take the exam and you put on a shield, and I'll assign you to Jerry Macon's case. <laughs> You'd assign me to a closed case? Some friend. Look, you gonna let me see a copy of the report or not? You know I can't do that without the family's consent. You have no legal jurisdiction. Thanks a lot, Claude. You find those other tapes, so I'll expect to hear from you. Captain, I'm ashamed of you. You know I can't show them to you without the family's consent. And you have no legal jurisdiction since the case is closed. Rocky, I can make things tough for you. You have to stand in line, pal. Somebody's already doing that. Mr. Collins, you're not going to like this, but I think I just saw Rocky heading towards transportation and wardrobe. Damn it, I thought I left orders to stop him at the gate. No, no, you listen to me. When he comes out, you stop him and you hold him for me. And I don't want to hear any excuses about how you didn't recognize him because he's in a costume and a borrowed car. No, no, make that a stolen car. From now on, anything Rocky borrows from this lot is to be considered stolen and deducted from your pay. for the good of the Beverly Hills Patrol. I only got a small interest in it. Yeah, yeah, but at least you're a partner with Mr. Martin and all those other celebrities. Partner, smartener, I still gotta make a living. Okay, okay, what do you want me to do? I want you to talk to Rocky. He uses his studio and everything in it like it's his own private warehouse. Well, it's against the rules. But since you drove all the way from Texas to see your sister, I'll make an exception. As you can see, the camera is fully automated and can be moved from one holding cell to the next. I was right, left side of the face. You didn't do it, Jerry. You couldn't have done it. Beverly Hills Patrol. Listen, Annie, I'm gonna nail those two guys that have been following me once and for all. Meet me over at the studio. I need you for a decoy. Drive me crazy looking for this car. It's needed out on location. Sorry, Stan. I'll trade it right into transportation. I'm telling you, if you hadn't have got this car back when you did, you... wait a minute. Trade it in on what? Hey, hold it. Don't move. Hey. Back up, back up. Turn around. What? Turn around. Spread eagle. 
Come on, leave. Hey, this is, leave. Ri this is ridiculous. You don't even know who we are. I know you're weaving and you're drunk. Hey, look, if you're just... Wow. Will you just let me... Keep it there, pal. If you want to die with your hand in that position, keep moving it. What, is he crazy? I suppose he's going to blow us both away. Why not? My word against nobody's. Go ahead, move. That's it. Move. I, I didn't did... get a chance to shoot this since this morning. I was just trying to reach into my pocket and show you my ID. We represent a very important section of the government. Whose government? If you reach into my pocket and pull out my ID, you'll be in for quite a surprise. I'll get it. I'll get it. It was Army Intelligence. Yeah, whose army? We're on a personal assignment to General Lavin. A very personal matter. Well, in that case, I guess you can go. General Lavin, oh, man. Part is over. Eight ball in the corner. Sorry. Don't be. You're a hero. Look at this, Chester. General Lavin attends Man of the Year Banquet for astronaut Jack Taylor. And look who's sitting next to him. What about it? It's the guy who's on the tape. Don't you get it? They're friends. They hang together. They drink together. God only knows what else they do together. Aki, half the important people in this city were at that function. You are so far out on a limb. What are you talking about? Look at the date. Look. It's one day before Jerry and Monica were murdered. General Lavin must have still been in town. Why? How do you know he didn't fly right back to his overseas command the next day? Because Annie called the base. Tell them what they said. They said they're forwarding his important calls to Palm Springs as of today. He's been around all week. So he's been around. Big deal. It's not a crime. What, am I a Russian spy or something? So he's got something to hide. Rocky, you cannot go at a guy like that head on. He's too insulated. Well, what about this guy? He's not. He owns a big restaurant. And the fact that they know each other is coincidence enough to justify going after him, isn't it? What if I said no? Would it make a difference? Come on, how could you say no? If Mr. Martin and the rest of the people that own this company ever find out that we can't even protect our own employees, how can they trust us to protect them? All right, all right, all right. Go. But if you need help... Call me. Of course. I never do anything without you. You know that. Come on, Annie. <laughs> Don't touch anything. You think I can really talk? The last thing I need is to listen to two inanimate objects. I'm just kidding. About what? Not. You know, this is Rodeo Drive. He said this is the most expensive street in the world. <laughs> Are we going someplace special? You'll see, it's a surprise. Speaking of surprises, I have some good news. Theo Holcomb, that lawyer who tried to get in touch with Jerry's father, he has something that Jerry asked him to keep for him. What was it? I don't know. He said that we could reach him on Monday. He was going to Palm Springs for the weekend. Palm Springs? Hmm. Arthur, I got a call from a guy named Leo Holcomb. He says he wanted to talk to me about the death of his two clients. I think we've got another blackmailer on our hands. It's probably just a matter of semantics. Now, the man is obviously interested in doing the right thing. Are you telling me that we ought to see him? Well, he's conveniently made it out of town where we're in no danger of anyone tripping over us. Why not? Palm Springs is lovely this time of the year. Arthur, I think you've got ice water running in your veins. No, just good wine. I'll we'll see you in the spring. <laughs> and, Marco, relax. There is no one in the world that can get anywhere near us. Right. 
Don't worry, it'll park itself. Chateau Neuf de Parc. Excellent choice, sir. Thank you. Hmm, that'll be fine. My goodness, where did you ever learn about all those wines? I didn't. It was in a movie I auditioned for by Patty Chayefsky. Well, then I've got some bad news for you. Um, Patty Chayefsky just cost you well over $100. No, he didn't. Because we're not paying for any of this. Mr. Marco is. How sweet of him. I know, but he doesn't know yet. Side of my table. Okay, thank you. Rocky, what can I do to help? You can go to the desk and check the calendar. Two nights ago, the party, remember? Come on, hurry up. You made it all up. Annie, hurry up. The calendar, huh? You're a fantastic actor. The look of pain on your face was brilliant. Brilliant, huh? That gorilla practically broke three of my ribs. You want to check the calendar, please? Mm -hmm. Um, th I think this is at Thursday night, 8.30, Arthur Harrison's house. Arthur Harrison, Arthur Harrison. I think he's one of our clients. What's the address? Um, it's not here, just... Who are you? What are you doing in my office? We were just... What are you looking at my desk for? Checking out where you were Thursday night. Your calendar says you were at a party at Arthur Harrison's house. What's the address? What are you, a cop? Was Monica Kern at that party? What do you know about Monica Curran? That's the wrong answer. Come on, Annie. Who, who are you? What do you want from me? I'm going to tell you who I am, and I'll tell you what I want. Okay. If you want to tiptoe your way through this homicide investigation, it's your business, Mr. Marco. But I think I should tell you that it's the fastest way I know to get to the gas chamber. Now, you want to help me or what? I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing? No. At least give me the guest list. I don't know nothing. Get out of here. Thanks for dinner. If I ever get an Oscar, this is where I'm having the fun. Get out of my... You've been harassing people about their attendance at some party the night that Jerry and Monica were killed. By innuendo, that's well on its way to slander. Come on, huh, Claude? You call simple questioning unusual harassment? What would you call dressing up in a traffic officer's uniform, pulling over the deputy commander of NATO's personal aides, and pointing a gun in their ears? Would you call that unusual harassment? I think that's terrible. Who did that? Rocky, you didn't. Let it go, Rocky. If you'll swear to me that you're through with this, I'll bury the warrant, and we'll forget all about it. Um, we'll take care of it, Claude. That job offer still holds. You're too good a cop to be wasting your time with this acting nonsense. You know where to reach me. I'm sorry about the way this turned out, Rocky. If you need some time off, take it. Get it out of your system. Sure. Thanks, Chester. Night, Chester. It's not a bad idea, Rocky. Maybe it's about time for you to start thinking about yourself again. You haven't done a thing about your career since this thing happened. Why do you suppose everybody's going to Palm Springs? very popular place? And probably a good place for a promising young actor to be seen by important people. Rocky. 
Are you sure you aren't going back on your word to the captain? I didn't give my word to anybody. Chester did. Find out where Marco's staying. Make reservations. For two? Size 36? Uh, what? What size are you? What size? 36? Uh, yeah. Good, good. That's good. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Over here, over here. I don't suppose you got Mr. Majors with you someplace. Mr. Majors? What's he look like? I'll check it out. Do you work on the show? I am the show, pal. All the stories are based on my real-life exploits. No kidding. You're the unknown stuntman? Unknown? Let me tell you something. People who count know who I am. You got it? Yeah. Good. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, whoa, whoa, listen now. I'm down here for a rest. No autograph pounds, no real estate agents trying to sell me a condo, and especially no beautiful women throwing themselves at me. You got it? All right, now listen. Who's the head bum? What do we need him for? I think I'm gonna like you. Let's talk business. Who is it? Danny. Come on, come on in. Well, three of the gentlemen that you asked me to check out are staying here, but I can't find a reservation for Harrison. What about a lawyer named Leo Holcomb? Holcomb? Yeah. Oh, yeah, him I know a lot about. He spends all his time down in the jacuzzi running room service ragged. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that him? You got a cigar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Well, 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 Major. It's a real pleasure to meet a real live astronaut. <laughs> How about a little champagne? I'd prefer to get this over with. I want to have as little to do with you as possible. I think you better sit down, Major. See, I'm doing you a favor meeting you one-on-one, -on -one, remember? In fact, I may be doing my client a disservice by not selling to the highest bidder. How can you be trying to help your clients? It's my understanding your clients are dead. You'd know quite a lot about that, wouldn't you, Major? I want it clear that I had nothing to do with the death of either of those two kids. Of course not. It was just one big fun party, wasn't it? <laughs> I've said all I have to say to you. Wait a minute. I have no uh, intention of ruining your career, you know. I'm just simply following my clients wishes. Now, your fee for my services comes to $50,000. $50,000? Man, are you crazy? I'm not the same league as those fat cats at the parties. I'm just a, a guest, a conversation piece. I ran a financial on you, Major. The fee is based on what I know you can handle. Now, you may have to sacrifice that second home on the lake, but, uh, well, it is your choice now, isn't it? You said to let you know if anybody on your list went out. So who went out? Yeah, all of them. Piled out of here in two cabs. Where'd they go? No idea. By the way, that Harrison guy never did check in. OK, thanks, Danny. Yeah? Is that you? I don't know. Who's you supposed to be? It is you. It's me. Come on in, me. What are you doing here? I tried to beep you, but you're way out of the zone. Annie, what's so important? Harrison is in Palm Springs. I figured that. He never registered here with everybody else. Well, I don't blame him. So, you don't blame him? Why? Well, why should he? He owns a big house here. So that's where they all went. You don't know where it is, do you? Yes, I do. You do? <laughs> No security down here, huh? 
Consequences of this course of action. And I concur, gentlemen. We're out of control. What about you, King? These gentlemen speak in military terms. Surely, with your sense of theater, you must realize that we have to see this thing through to its climax. I'm sorry. In my business, we know how everything turns out before we begin. Arthur, I have a strong suspicion you're enjoying this more than the parties you give. That's right, Arthur. I seriously wonder if any of us really knew you before this happened. Okay, why don't you just start out by simply paying off the parasite and let me know how it comes out. Perhaps the thought that the deaths of Jerry and Monica were not self-induced. You ever think about that? But they were self-induced. I hope you all believe that. There may be some doubt in the group, Arthur. After all, it's very convenient. Well, don't look at me. I'm not a likely candidate to arrange the deaths of two would-be blackmailers. Now, on the other hand, you, General, with your elite guard, can mete out awfully swift justice. And you, Marco, with your relatives who are so adept at getting rid of unwanted competition. Need I say more? He's right, you know. We've got to stick together at this point. I don't agree. I want to know what you're planning, all of you. I think we understand that there's one thing we must do, and that is regain custody of that lone remaining tape. Now, to do that, we have to appear to be willing not to do business with Mr. Holton. To do business with us, he doesn't need the tape in hand. We know what's on it. But if he tries to sell it to somebody else, he's gonna have to show his wares. Then we've got it. We're ready for it. Each of us, in his own way, will be asked to contribute. Now, wait a minute. If he doesn't sell to us, who does he peddle it to? We will know soon enough. You will all be informed as to what will have to be done. Good night. Paging Mr. Holcomb. Paging Mr. Holcomb. Okay, thank you. Hey, come on in. I'm paging this guy Holcomb all over the hotel. I swear he's ducking my calls. Maybe. He ordered a bucket of champagne sent down to the jacuzzi at 11. You can see him there. So I want to talk to him alone. You want to make another 50? Name it. I need some insect repellent. You don't have bugs at this hotel? Oh, yes, you do. You got a big cockroach right in the middle of that jacuzzi now. What else you got in a spray can? Disinfectant. Good, get it. I'll make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. OK, here we go. Champagne for Mr. Holcomb, and a vodka martini straight up for Mr. Nahan. Yeah, I'm Holcomb right here. <laughs> right, where's Mr. Nahan? I have no idea. Just open the champagne, OK? <laughs> yes, sir, I will, but I have to find out about Mr. Nahan because of this spray from the clinic. Spray? Yes. Now, was Mr. Nahan in the jacuzzi? I mean, did any part of him physically go into the water? No, we haven't seen anybody since we've been here. Oh, he's gonna do it to me again. Would you folks mind moving over this way so I can spray this area, please? Hey, 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 hey. Spray, uh, what is it? I don't know, I just do as I'm told. I mean, I don't think that they should let anybody in the jacuzzi that's a carrier either. Uh, carrier? Yes. Well, the Eisenhower Clinic is the reason for some of our biggest spenders here. Come on, we're crying Boy, I'll tell you, this stuff could kill an elephant, huh? You can't even get near his room after the mate spray. What is he spraying for? <coughs> I don't know, but I can tell by the way he tips he doesn't plan to live long. Hey, come on. Listen, would you folks mind staying in that area over there, please? Uh -oh. I might as well be safe and spray the whole area. 
I mean, oh. better safe than sorry, right? Hey, man. Hey, you. I deserve this. Some of the nurses won't even touch him. I suddenly feel the urge to take a long, hot shower. Look, I don't think I really feel like having any champagne. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll just... I'll see you up what in the What are you talking later. about? Come on. I'll see you Honey, later, this guy's Leo. a flake. Come here. Come on back here. Let her go. You don't want anybody to hear what I have to say to you, pal. Oh, you're, um... Uh... What's his name, right? Nelson? Huh? Yeah, you should have known, right? Shut up, Steve. Come on, easy. I don't have to listen to you. You don't have to listen to me? Where the hell did you get the idea that you could blackmail the U.S. Army, the U.S. Air Force, Syndicate, various assorted cutthroat businessmen, and a lunatic millionaire who likes to watch his friends squirm around nude. You're just a practicing attorney representing the interests of his clients. You're just a practicing knucklehead. Your clients are dead. And the people that murdered them, you're trying to blackmail them. But Jerry killed himself. I mean, the police said so. You believe that fairy tale? I got a duck that lays golden eggs. You want to buy it? All right. Easy, okay? Just excuse me? I'm your only chance. You're dead. Give me the tape. I'll call up the dogs for you. I'll help Mr. Harrison you. and his friends aren't gonna have any reason to bother me once the world knows the truth about he and his sick friends. And I'll be out of it. Hey, Hoke. I hope you didn't do anything stupid. must love to worship coffins from the inside. development in a case at first considered to be a murder-suicide, publisher of Exposé magazine Harley Tyne announced that he'd completed negotiations with local attorney Leo Holcomb for videotapes which reveal the sex lives of nearly a dozen prominent Americans. The repercussions could reach all the way to Washington, D.C. And on the sports trail, the local... You know, that was on every channel. Now, am I wrong in saying that uh, our case has taken another turn for the worse? I don't know. I just hope some certain stupid lawyer hasn't taken a turn for dead. Thanks a lot, Mr. Martin. I gotta run. Guy. Let's dump him. Sorry for what's happened. I never meant for you to get hurt. 
Let's get out of here. I think you better stick around. One of those two clowns got to explain a murder to the police. What? Holcomb's dead, sir. By the feel of at least four hours. Oh, my God. Where's this thing gonna end? What are you trying to say? You two guys didn't have anything to do with it? That's right. He was dead when we got there. What about the tape? The safe was open, sir. Whatever was in it was gone. Tapes, cash, everything. Mr. Nelson? I'll tell you everything about my involvement and my men's involvement. I think you better wait. Tell it to the police. I never meant for any harm to come to you. I hope that's obvious by now. My men were just trying to protect me. I had it with two-faced hypocrites like you. You know that? Yes, I said that's enough. Get in there and call the police. Yes, sir. Go wait here. What are you talking about? You can't arrest somebody for finding a body. I'm trying to tell you that those two guys have been following me since the first two murders. I'm positive they're the ones that cracked me in the head and took the tape. And I know they're working for somebody that was at that party. How do you know? I just know, that's all. You're the one that broke your word. You followed Marco out into the desert. You're the one that broke into Harrison's grounds. Captain, with all due respect, you're talking about charges that don't even belong in the same breath with homicide. But at least I can make burglary stick. And that's about all I can make stick. General Lavin may or may not have gone to a party. He may have reason to want those tapes. I suspect he did, considering what we're learning about. But since you didn't choose to come forward with them, I guess we'll never really know, will we? I don't know. I just know that the people that were at that party were the last ones to see Monica alive. No, Jerry was the last one to see Monica alive. Jerry was at least there. Whether he killed her and himself or not. You know, that's the first time you've considered the possibility of doubt. I must be getting someplace, huh? Nope. He just pulled up lame. You want some coffee? No. It's obvious that Leo Holcomb decided to go into the blackmailing business. Somebody decided to put him right out of it again. They hit his safe and they clobbered him. It was as professional a hit and break in as I've ever seen. Do you know what that means? Yeah. It means we'll never find out who did it. But at least we could keep the pressure on whoever paid for it, can't we? Be my guest. Beverly Hills Patrol. Okay. Coming! Hi, Beverly Hills Patrol. We got a cancellation order. My man was here yesterday. I know, and that's why I'm here today. He had trouble with the secondary Uniflex response fisher.
What are you doing here? Nothing. I just wanted to see what it was like to be a boy. So a man indulges himself in a hobby. What's the harm in that? People are dead because of your indulgences. Well, not me. I'm too frail for that kind of violence. Yeah, but you're strong enough to dial a phone and order it. Get it while it's hot. Would you take that away? I'm not hold interested. It, hold it. That's mine. Thank you, dear. Wonderful. Just exactly who are you? You know who I am. I'm Jerry Macon's friend. Jerry Macon's friend? Yeah. Oh, is he one of those people you were talking about? Yeah, one of the dead ones. Oh, and your motive in this, oh, it's revenge. Yeah, I think you hit it. Revenge. So you expect to come barging in here and bully some kind of information out of me? No. I just keep putting low lifes into a vial. Then I put on the heat, and I watch the scum rise to the top. You know what I mean? Sure, I know what you mean. Sometimes it blows up right in your face. It's OK. You're in the vial. As a matter of fact, that's a good name for you, isn't it? Vile. Customers are starting to cancel our services, claiming irresponsible behavior from my employees. The heat's on. The scum is starting to rise. Now, either you let it go, Rocky, or I'll fire you. You can wait a little longer, chat. For what? I'm waiting for a phone call. From who? I don't know yet. Somebody that was at that party that we haven't heard from. Rocky! It's for you. It's your agent. Line three. Try your luck. Hello? Hey. What do you got for me? No kidding. Well, that's great. Who's directing? Yeah? No. No, no problem at all. Sure, okay, thanks. All right. Oh, Rocky, I'm so excited for you. He got a part. Oh, Rocky. Hey, you're ready. Now, what's the matter? You don't seem pleased. I thought this was the break you were looking for. Yeah. But the job came from the somebody that was at the party that we didn't hear from yet. Kane L. Stevens. But he's the biggest director in Hollywood. I wonder what he's got in mind for me. Friday night, Half Nelson brings his crime busters to NBC, and there's no one in Beverly Hills too big to help Rocky solve a case from the great... Excuse me, gentlemen. ...to the not-so-great. All right, guys, here's your assignment. The Hollywood Bowl. I love it there. What's that? Well, I believe it's uh, Beethoven's Eroica. Gee, I didn't... I didn't know they did sex shows there. Guys, guys, stay close to me, all right? I don't want anybody getting hurt. You understand? I want you to pay very close attention. You'll be working around real explosives, live explosives. So I want everybody knowing exactly what they're doing at all times. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, follow me. All right, now, these white crosses or X's 
are mine markers. They're mine markers. The important thing is not to be in those places at the wrong time. You understand? All right, Phil, show them what happens. Okay, stand clear! Movie magic. Great, isn't it? Not if it makes you disappear. When you walk under this limb, the bullets will hit along the top edge, so be sure you stoop down. Uh, sorry, Nelson, you don't have to stoop. Okay, Phil, hit the squibs. Time short is good, huh? All right, man, let's go to war. <laughs> Another dollar, huh, guys? Another chance not to see tomorrow. We'll worry about not seeing tomorrow tomorrow. Let's go have a couple of beers, huh? <laughs> I don't like any of this. It's too dicey. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Despite the fact that you can't possibly get out of this in one piece, you're having the time of your life, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Where did you first meet Harrison? I mean, before this case. Uh, I, uh... I met him on a, a robbery detail a lot of years ago. Did you? I'll be damned. How'd you put it together? What'd I do wrong, one cop to another? Do you really want to know? Yeah. Well, for one thing, a, a city like L.A., it's a busy place for a homicide cop, but not you. You were always on my back. Every step I made, you were there. Oh, come on. There's always a lot of pressure with big shots are involved. In this case, had some of the biggest. That's what really tipped me off. A guy like Harrison's got pulled all the way to the top. And no matter how hard I pushed and leaned and bothered people, he never once went over your head. I figured there had to be an awful good reason for that. Now you tell me, one cop to another, how the hell did you let him get to you? Happened by erosion. Erosion to murder's a big jump, Claude. It's not so far. You get around the people with a lot of money to throw around you, do them a favor, they do you a favor. After a while, the favors get bigger and bigger. Your insides get smaller and smaller until it's... There's nothing left. And you had to kill Monica? Oh, jeez. Harrison sent me over to get the stolen tapes back, and she became hysterical. I couldn't shut her up. And then Jerry walked in. God, what a mess. 
I think I emptied my gun just to drown out their screams. It's too bad, Claude. You were really a good cop. It could happen to anyone. No, it could. You never liked me, did you? I used to a lot. What are you looking at? I'm looking at myself. Once. Get out. Get out. Go on. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Come on, Claude. You want to talk about it? We already talked. Yeah, you already did. Are you wired? Like a Sony. You let me down the path. You were dying to come. Where are you gonna run, Claude? Where? Don't let him get to you, kid. I hope you win ten Oscars. Just a funeral. He died a long time ago. Mr. Martin, the pin setter's acting up again. I'll take care of that. Aren't you supposed to be on a picture? No, they're reshooting my part. Why would they do that? They want a star. Well, you're gonna be a star. They're on a tight schedule. They can't wait that long. You know how it is. Oh, no, I don't. Hey, I went right to the top. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Annie. Yeah? Do me a favor. Find the champ, Larry Holmes. I was supposed to look after him, but I'm gonna be busy for a while. No problem. He was asking for a phone, and I sent him into the guest house. Guest house? Is it hunk in there? Oh, my goodness. Next week on Today, House Speaker Tip O'Neill. I'm Jane Pauley. Also, Jacqueline Smith, designer Perry Ellis, and the biggest player in the NBA. That's next week on Today. Tomorrow night, Clint Eastwood stars in Every Which Way But Loose, followed by the all-new comedy All Together Now. Say, oh, we've come a long way.